All right, today I have some regular American Army GIs for bolt action from Warlord Games. This is me documenting my process of going over it so I can actually remember how I did it in the future when I move on other products. And if anybody finds something useful out of that, that's nice too. So we're going to start out with how we base this thing. So far we've been using our Surface Primer. Black from Vallejo. Airbrush that on. Same thing with the Dryad Bark, just to tone it up a bit. I'm going to put that on there, and then we start into the base colorings. For the pants, we use a bit of Olive Brown from Vallejo. We'll go for the jackets. We'll use U.S. Field Drab. For any of the metal parts, especially the gun stocks, I go over with a black gray. For the boots and any kind of leathering you might like, you can either use a flat brown, especially for the gun stocks, and a red leather. That's what I placed on the boots. I also did a pre-highlight of red leather on the gun stocks to give it a woody two-tone flavoring. For any kind of the helmet leather straps, did a leather brown. For the packs, the belt, and the uh, straps going along the shoulders, we did flat earth. For the helmets, U.S. Dark Green. Now after we have our base colors on there, well, I suppose I should add the one for the flesh too. The flesh is very experimental for me, but I will say I used a Bugman's Glow from Citadel on that one as the basing of the flesh. But as we move on a bit, we're going to move into the shading category. The shading category is a bit, how should I say, shading can be very easy or very difficult. The process in shading is I want to get a little bit of dark in the recess. I don't want it to completely tone down to color. So what I'll usually do is put a little bit of glazed medium in there just to even it out a bit. And what I'll do is I'll take a rather moderate or larger flat brush. I'll make sure it's watered down. And I'll mix the glazing medium very thoroughly in there. I'll usually consistently add a little bit of water in there so it's very diluted and then we'll add it on top of there. I think it gives it a very nice effect. And you also have to be very careful. What I'll take is perhaps a, a smaller brush or a thicker brush or a smaller flat brush and I'll go back and start wicking up as much as I possibly can because you don't want that to settle. If you settle you'll ruin certain aspects of the model. You've got to be really careful when you do that. Now what we're going to move on is the washing stage. What I would use for a wash, I would use the Agrax Earthshade. Now I would use that pretty much all over. It doesn't matter if you get the greens or the uh, shoes or anything like that because it's going to be very faint. The main part we want to get is make sure it's on the shirt, the pants, and the pack, if anything. For all the items we'll be painting green, just like the helmets, uh, bazooka, the little rocket bits, we're just going to do some Methonian camo shade on that. And for the metal parts and the gun parts, I use the contrast color, it's the Bacillium Gray. Now I won't use the black Templar or regular inks because I don't think it works very well with the black gray we used. If we use this one, it, it makes it seem right. It kind of gives it that faux metal look if you choose to do so. Now this is where the fun part comes in. We have wood grain from Vallejo. Now this, it's kind of a shade, but it's much thicker and darker. It gives you this really rich wood tone. What I'll do is I'll put this over the boots as well as any of the, uh, the wooden stocks like shovels or the stocks to the guns. What that does is it gives it that kind of dark varnished look uh, for both leather and wood. It, it's fantastic. Now I'll let those dry. Usually if I do any kind of primer or shading. I usually give it about a day or so before I go over back with anything just so it, it hardens. It's got enough time to be sturdy because if you try to apply this with any part where it's not ready you'll get flaking, you'll get chipping. Uh, the primer you can solve that by just getting a little bit more primer on it but if you do it with the wash uh, you might have to completely strip the model if you mess that part up. Interim shading right here. This is what I call the the cleanup highlight, especially if you use shading, it's using 50% of a highlight and 50% of the base to kind of give this mid-tone cleanup look. Now for the 
field drab, I did a 50-50 of, well, the jackets, I should say, 50-50 of field drab and khaki to kind of tone that up there. Same thing for flat earth and tan earth. We did that for the backpacks and the strapping right there. I didn't really put too much highlighting for the boots because I think I look, they look pretty good the way they are. It's possible you could use some orange brown on top of that, but very, very faintly, very faintly. Otherwise, you'll mess up the kind of uh, texture we're going for in there. Now for the U.S. Army green, all the metal parts, the bazooka bits, you could do a 50-50 dark, U.S. dark green and uniform green, but it might not be necessary since they're such small areas. Usually it's best to do in a larger areas. I didn't do it for the pants, honestly. I think I just went over that with some basic flat brown. Or rather, you could use the leather brown as well. They're both kind of... Uh, Pretty decent browns, but very, very gingerly and lightly because I don't want to lose the dark brown of the pants. For the leathering straps, if you did it like the gun straps for leather, I would recommend a light brown highlight on top of that. Now if we move on to the pure highlight. For the guns, the red, the pre-shading of the Red leather over the brown should be just enough. You don't really need to go over it anymore. There's a possibility if you want to make it look a little bit more wooden, you can do an orange brown on top of that. Might even a light brown that might even work for you. And then for the helms, we could use the uniform green, just very, very sparingly. Extreme highlights on that. For the leather straps around the helmet, or the gun straps, light brown, will do you good there. For the bazooka case, on that one, I did the very faintest bits of a red leather on top of that flat brown we put on on the base. I think it turned out okay. For the guns, you can pretty much use any kind of metal you want. You can also use a light gray if you want to use faux metal color or I would recommend more of a blue gray to give it a cobalt look but I used a shining metal from Army Painter. don't have that one out but it's shining metal. We know exactly what that looks like. For the brown highlight on there I believe I used the leather brown for his helmet. And make sure the shovel right there very smidging of the metal highlight for the shovel bit, very easy to miss, and any of the bayonets along the back. For the jackets, we can do a little dribbling of khaki. For the Pax belts, we can put a little bit of tan earth there. I did a little bit of difference for the flesh this time. Over the base of the Bugman's Glow, I tried to go for the 50-50 Bugman's Glow Cadian flesh tone layering on there. And then we did another blending of just regular Cadian flesh tone. And then we tried this wonderful color, the Cobalt Skin on top of it. Very, very highlight, extreme highlight of Cobalt Skin. I think it turns out quite nicely. One thing I've noticed about these guys is they do seem a bit chonkier. Now, I know they're supposed to be heroic scale, but they seem a little bit more heroic than their counterparts, especially uh, the Germans. Uh, compared to the Germans, these guys are thick, a du double capital C thick, er, than their counterparts. Now, we can just say America Fugger, but they do seem a little bit off on the sizing scale. Now, they're not as chunky as Cadians, of course, but uh, they do seem a bit noticeably bigger. I think that's a bit weird. Now, I tried to make the most dynamic pose I could out of the sprue because I don't buy, usually I'm by the box unless I like them and I'll get like a starting army, but I'll buy the sprue separately since it's pretty cheap and you can get a feel of, for the army or what you might need or make right there. And it's nice to have. I mean, if you're going to play bolt action, you might need samplings of other armies. 
run little mini skirmish games or patrol, something like that. But I went for the most dynamic bit I could make. A bazooka boy taking off his helmet like he's kind of creeping up on the enemy. We've got this guy with a rocket supporting with a shotgun. We've got this guy. I mean, it's, people say it's a bazooka pack, but you could put a, an explosive. They could be uh, grenades. They could be Bangalore torpedoes, whatever you want on there. This guy could be a medic since we got him running with his pouch. We got Bar Boy there, and we got, we got Sarge or an NCO just blaring away in this heroic stance with his Tommy gun. But there is one extra detail I added to the faces right there. I tried to make it real for the. I don't know if you can see it here, but we might need another picture for it. Put a little bit of flat brown eyebrow. I actually put eyebrows on him. That's very rare to see. And on the bottom lip, I used a bit of black red to give him that more human look as opposed to being a generic flesh trooper. But I thought that was an extra bit of detail. I did like I put the, the black red on all their bottom lips to give them a more human look. And I do think it turned out quite nicely. And as for anything I could have done better. Well, I'm still trying to improve the fleshing, as we did some eyebrows and lip service that time. It, it's kind of leveling that up slightly. Let's see. I didn't find any more highlights for the brown pants, but I think what I did with them is all right. I think for the bases, I might need to find a different primer, other than black all the time. That might speed things up just a tad. I need to see if they'll have... Uh, Baleo's got a wide variety of primers. I need to look into some more browns or greens to see what we can do about that. But that's everything I have for right now. If you found anything useful, that's awesome. If you were able to make it to the end of this through my rambled babblings, well, good for you. Oh yes, and the, the piece de resistance, the coating, the varnish. I used the mate varnish from the Mecca Vallejo line. Very good really put that over any kind of drab military unit and it really makes all the colors pop and come together.